Jesus. Lord, prove us not. Am I on? Yeah, that's better. Okay, so good to see everybody this morning. Good to see those who have not been here before. Um, We're growing. Each week we are we are growing. To say a year ago, it was May last year, Doreen, when you called me and said that would I come? And if I didn't come, they'd close this place. <coughs> Probably close this place because there was fewer people than there ever had been. And, and even now, if you look back over the year, there'd be fewer still. But you know, God had a, God had a better plan and a bigger plan. And you know, sometimes we only see the short term. We're quite nearsighted. But well, God sees the bigger picture, he sees the future, and he sees, he has in his heart plans that we are not always aware of. So we're here. And I, I just want to look at a message. I believe he'd say, prophetic message, like that slide. I thought that was really funky <laughs> myself. It took me ages to do that. <laughs> but the page is turned is the title of the message. It's probably quite simple to those who know what they're doing. <laughs> But the title for this morning is The Page Has Turned or Turning the Page. We started 2024 saying that this year was a year of growth. Now, if you know anything about growth, whenever there's growth, there's change. You don't have a little boy, Josiah, who was born and then he grows, and when he's 15, he's still baby nappy, sucking his thumb and crawling on the floor. He changes as he grows. Yeah. So whenever growth comes, change comes. We cannot grow unless we change. And unfortunately, as we get older, many of us don't like change because we get quite set in our ways of, of how things, how we think God should do things. That's generally what it is. We are open to change because, ladies, you have your hair cut and permed and coloured and you buy different clothes and your shoes and you always have a new mobile phone. You know what I mean? So you're always open to change. Steve, there's somebody in the back room. Um, it, it, we, we are open to change all the time. We are open to change. It just depends what the change is. That's the thing. And yet when it comes to God and Christian things, those are the things that we normally resist change in. You know? Un unless you are the type of person who goes for a, an Indian and you'll over it, you'll only ever eat a chicken korma. Because you're not going to have a, you know, a lamb korma or a chicken tikka masala. God forbid that you might have something different. You know, on a Friday you'll always have your fish and chips with your curry sauce. God help you if you ever had fish and chips with gravy. It just, it just doesn't happen, does it? You know, we have to have the same, the same, the same. And there is a place for that. You know, we haven't got to change everything all the time. Otherwise, we'd be, you know, our brains would be frazzled. But there's a time and a place to change. And, 2024 is a, is a year to change, a year to grow. The word growth means to increase our capacity. Jenny mentioned this at the women's conference about increasing our capacity. That word capacity is a maximum amount that any person can contain. The amount that we can hold or contain. And some people have a very low capacity to handle things. And they get overwhelmed very easily, very quickly. But God says, I want you to grow so that you can change, so that you can increase your capacity to handle more things. Whether that be emotionally, mentally, spiritually, relationally, fi financially, it doesn't really matter. But as a body, as a people here, we've got to embrace what was, what is the word for 2024 and grow and develop and increase our capacity and do things differently and allow the Holy Spirit to enlarge us as people so that we can be used by God. My question is, if you compare yourself today to the 1st of January, have you actually grown? Have you actually changed? Have you actually developed? Or are you the same person doing the same thing, plodding along, no change, no growth, no development? That's the question. I did say on the 31st of January, when I mentioned about 2024 being the year of growth, I said not everybody will grow. If you remember, you may not have done, but I said it. 
And why I said that was, is because some people just don't want to grow. They're happy being stupid. <laughs> <laughs> they're happy being boring, or they're happy with their life being what it is. When God says, I've got far more for you, yeah. but you know what? I ain't going to get to Tel Aviv this year. I'm going to get a much wedlock for my holidays. Because I've always been to much wedlock. And I've been there for the last 45 years. So why would I go to Tel Aviv this year and try something different? Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm happy with much wedlock. God help us. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what I mean? It's like, why would I do something different and embrace something different that's going to be better and greater? When we'd rather have the same. The purpose of a caterpillar is not to stay as a caterpillar, is it? We used to race them at the top of my mum's road when we were little, before they built the houses at the top of my mum's road where she lives. We used to hunt around for caterpillars with some chalk on the pavement, mark the starting point, mark the end, happy days. Then we'd race our caterpillar along the tarmac to see which caterpillar won. Sad, didn't it? But we, had, we enjoyed it. But the purpose of a caterpillar is not to stay as a caterpillar, it's to become a butterfly. That's the purpose of the caterpillar. You know, the, the purpose of an apple seed is not to stay an apple seed, it's to be planted in the ground to become a tree that bears more apples, containing more seeds. That's the purpose of an apple tree. It would be sad if we kept all the seeds out of an apple, put them in a jar for a rainy day, put them on a shelf and said, well, I'm going to keep them because, well, just in case we need them. And we never took them, planted them in the ground to allow the apple if we could only hear the apple talk. Because when you took the apple seed and put the apple seed in the ground, if we could hear the apple seed, I'm sure it would be singing. <laughs> Rejoicing, because it's now been able to fulfill its purpose. Because the apple seed's purpose is to be put in the ground. It's not to be put on a shelf, is it? Yeah. I, mean, I think that's bonkers, but it's true. <laughs> the apple seed needs to be planted. It needs to be able to grow and change to fulfill his purpose. You know, there is a quote that said, if you're not growing, you're backsliding. If you're not growing, you're backsliding. Now that's that's one to debate and discuss, but you know, my, my throwing the question out to you, do you pray any more now than what you're used to? Do you read the word more now than you're used to? Or are you just doing the same thing, leaving your Bible on the shelf, rusty dusty, not doing anything and you're not growing are you giving more than you used to give or you say well this is the amount i give and i always give and i'm never going to change i'm in are you giving is your commitment the same as it always has been you know i was thinking about when i worked in lincoln there was just a handful of us in the department we had some characters i won't say the lady's name i doubt if she'll ever see the, the video but we had this one lady she was a character and off i was only in me 30, 31, I think, when I was there, and she was in the 60s. And uh, there was a thousand people in the company, but she knew. She worked on the factory shop floor, and then she got, she came into the department that worked with us. But I tell you, she was incredible, because she knew more than all the directors of the company. Think. In other words, she had an opinion about how the, the, the business could be run better, than the three directors who were running the business. But the funny thing with her was she, she, she always turned up late and she always left early. And she used to have at least seven or eight fag breaks during the day for at least 20, 25 minutes. Now I would sit there and I would get in early. I lived around the corner, but I'd, I'd get in early because I wanted a coffee. That's dawn with the way. Read the paper. But I'd get in early, he would leave, I'd often work for my lunch break, never take a break, I'd just keep working. And, and I, this, this made me think when I was in bed a couple of nights ago, I thought, in terms of her level of commitment versus my level of commitment, she would have said she was committed. But was she really? Because I believe that a person's level of commitment is determined by how, they, how much they want, she wanted the company to succeed. Last one in, first one out, didn't do a fat lot, and every time she she off to the Monday morning, <coughs> we knew that was a week off work. <laughs> yeah, she was one of those type of ladies. 
And if she complained of a headache on Friday, we definitely knew she won't come in on Monday. That was what she was like. She wasn't committed. She hadn't bought in to wanting the business to grow. And yet she had all the ideas and she knew everything more than the directors. Amazing lady. <laughs> Said sarcastically. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? From in terms of our commitment, how much do we want this church to succeed? Determines how committed we are. Because when a person is reliant on you and you're not here, then there's a hole. When someone says they'll do something and then don't do it, then there's a hole. And then you just go out well, for, for three weeks and it's like, well, what's going on now then? How much do you want this place to succeed? And we can pray all day, but if we don't put action to our prayers, very little will change. We have to do stuff. I'd love to do my message, by the way. I, I've just got off completely on a tangent. But we know how much have we grown these last five months? That's my question. How much have we grown? Our purpose as a group, as a church, is not to stay small. And our purpose as individuals, which make up the whole, is not to stay small. Yeah. It's, to, it's to mature so that we can bear fruit. We can reveal Christ to a generation. Sounds very yeah, cliche, doesn't it? But it is true. On May the 4th, on Saturday the 4th of May, sorry, at around 12 o'clock, I was sat talking to Charles and all of a sudden there was like a pop inside me. You know, if you've ever popped your muscle, your, like your thigh or your cough, and there's that bit of a pop that you get and then you get a lot of pain afterwards because you can't walk. It wasn't a painful pop, but there was a pop inside of me. And as that pop, it, it's never happened before, it got my attention and the words came to me very, uh, pretty quickly, the season's changed. I didn't go looking for anything, I was talking to Charles about probably nothing really, but, but pop, it happened, the, the season changed. Then we came in Sunday morning, Doreen didn't realise when she was talking to Jenny, Jenny told me afterwards and Doreen said to Jenny, end of an era, we're in, we're in a new era. So on Saturday, I, this came to me with the season has changed. Do, Doreen has no idea, but she just said to Jenny, we're in a new era. Same thing, different words. Autumn and, se autumn and winter seasons are never about any growth. They're about everything dying. You know, plants will die, they'll return to the ground. There's no life. But when the season changes, and we enter into spring, then you'll start to see the snowdrops. Because they're one of the first plants that will grow, the first flowers. You'll see the snowdrops, and then you'll see the daffodils, and eventually the bluebells come. Because it's all about life, because the season's changed. The page has turned with regards to this, this church. It's a new day. We're in a new era, we're in a new season. We are no longer a dying church, but a growing church. Amen. That was said with such enthusiasm. Amen. We are no longer a dying church, but we're a growing yes. church. Amen. Okay. I'm, you know what? I'm, I, I saw this thing. This guy said, I saw this on TV. He said, if I say this is in a white church, <laughs> we're a dying church. We're no longer a dying church, but a growing church. Everybody would go, oh yes. If I say that in a black church, <laughs> yeah. he's dead to die, if I say that in a white church, everybody will go. And somebody will start running around the church and they'll start to cheer. We need a bit of that sometimes. A bit of excitement. A bit of excitement in the place. We're no longer a dying church. We're a growing church. And I'm going to explain this in a minute because. I mentioned a little bit last Sunday morning, but I've, I've studied it through this week and I want to share some things from Isaiah 62. If you're there, Isaiah 62 verse 1. He says, For Zion's sake I will not hold my peace. For Jerusalem's sake I will not rest until her righteousness goes forth as brightness and our salvation as a lamp that burns. The Gentiles shall see your righteousness and all kings your glory. You shall be called by a new name. You'll be called by a new name, which the mouth of the Lord will name. So God will name you, not yourself. 
or some honourable neighbour who don't like you. <laughs> you shall also be a crown of glory in the hand of the Lord, and a royal diadem in the hand of your God. You shall no longer be termed or be called forsaken, nor shall your land anymore be termed be called desolate. But you will be called Efsibah, and your land Beulah. There's a good old fashioned word for you Beulah. For the Lord delights in you, and your land shall be married. For as a young man marries a virgin, so shall your sons marry you, and as the bridegrooms rejoice over the bride, so shall your God rejoice over you. I have set watchmen on your walls, O Jerusalem. They shall never hold their peace day and night. You who make mention of the Lord, do not keep silent, and give him no rest till he does what he says he will do. That's my version. <laughs> and give him no rest till he establishes, until he makes Jerusalem a, 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 a praise in the earth. Verse 1, the church, for Zion's sake. Often when he refers to Zion, he's referring to the church. So I'm going to, I'm going to change a lot of the word in them. I'm going to give it from the first book of Keith. All right? <laughs> For the sake of this church, I will not hold my peace. If you don't hold your peace, you don't keep silent. So for the sake of Christ God and the mission, I'm not going to hold my peace anymore. I'm not going to keep silent. I will not rest until righteousness and salvation burns again in this place. Verse 2. The unsaved shall see and the kings shall see your glory. And he said, well, king, we don't know any kings, only Charlie, King Charles. No, 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 it's referring to the leaders, the leaders of your territory. The unsaved shall see, and the leaders of your territory, that's the new mayor, God bless him. Don't inspire confidence when I saw his interview, bless him. Well, we need to pray for him. Yes. That's all I can say. The kings will see your glory, and you will be called a new name, which the mouth of the Lord will name. You will no longer be forsaken or desolate. Were you ever labelled when you was a child? Yes. Would you call names? Yes. Ugly. Yes. yes. Yeah. There's all sorts of names that are, that are very nice. Mm -hmm. I'd probably call most of them if I'm totally fair. But you're called names, you're labelled. I, I, can, I can phone people up now from when I was on my missions team years ago, and I've told you this, they, they, the label they gave me was the stuttering Baptist boy. That was the label, and they still know me, they don't know me as Keith, they know me. I spoke to one of the ladies there, Doreen's her name, and I spoke to her in Wales, and I said, hey Doreen, do you remember me? You're the stuttering Baptist boy. Yeah, my name's Keith actually. <laughs> They didn't, name me, they, they didn't know me by Keith, they knew me by a label. And, and the, the, most of the time, labels aren't very pleasant, are they? No. They're not nice things. But he said the Lord will call you by a new name. He will label you something. And he says this in verse 3, You will be a crown of glory in the hand of the Lord, and a royal diadem in the hand of your God. What does a crown signify? So you will be a crown in the glory in the hand of the Lord. A crown signifies authority and victory. So you will be, guys, every person who is in this place, you will be a sign of authority and victory in the hand of the Lord. You will be a royal diadem in the hand of God. A diadem. What earth is a diadem? I have to look it up. But I didn't know. It's just something we used to sing it in him years ago about the diadem, but it's a crown with jewels on. A crown that's full of jewels, literally a tiara that you'd put on a beauty queen. But in the New Living Translation it says, the Lord will hold you in his hand for all to see. A splendid crown in the hand of God. That's what he says in that verse. The Lord, the Lord will think about this, guys. The Lord will take this church and he will hold it for everybody to see. Look guys, you label this church yeah. with all sorts of things. Yeah? yeah? And, I'm, and I'm, I'm not being nasty, but I know what church life can be like, and I know what some Christians can be like, and I know what they say about other churches. Yeah. Oh, that's one street, no one goes there anymore. They were shut down, what happened there? Waste of time, shut it down. Mm. Let's build apartments, flatten it. 
Let's make some money, a lot of land. That's what they, that's what they say. But God says, get lost. I'm gonna hold this church in my hand for everybody to see. And when you labeled it with all these things, I'm going to say to you, no, 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 this place is a crown, a place of authority and a place of victory. Verse 4, he says, you will no longer be forsaken. This is the name. What does forsaken mean? It means you'll no longer be abandoned. You'll no longer be deserted. What happens when you're deserted? Everybody's left. A bit like being a wolf's fan, isn't it? Everybody deserts. Wolves comes to the Albion, sees the lights, and follows a better team. But uh, they desert. People have left this place. The, the congregation, they smaller and smaller and smaller. Then people label the place. It's a dying church. People label, label the place. It's going to close. These are the labels. And we don't realize that, you know, death and life, we the power of the tongue. And when we speak these things, yes. we create the things that we say. And even though we don't want it, yeah. we're still speaking it. And he says, that you will no longer be called forsaken or desolate. Desolate means empty. You'll no longer be empty or uninhabited. For God calls you Hefzibar. Took me ages to get that one, correct? Hefzibar and your land Beulah. What's the significance of Beulah? Because Beulah, <clears throat> now let, let me come, I've jumped the gun. I, I want to take this point. The New Living Translation says, Never again will you be called the forsaken church or the desolate church. Your new name will be the city of God's delight and the bride of God. For the Lord delights in you and will claim you as his bride. The message says no more will anyone call you. This is what people have had to say about this place. The one, the one said, people have talked about this place and talked about some of the people here and said, you're wasting your time. It's going to close. It's going to close. And God looks at people and says, never in a million years will that happen here. But if you think about it, if you think about the big, big picture, 55 and a half years ago, a little boy was born who couldn't walk. He was in a wheelchair. He ended up in a wheelchair and a little thing on the floor because he couldn't walk. Who then stuttered? Who then God takes on a journey around the world to bring him back here 55 years later. And God said, see, all this has been going on for all these years, but I've got this taken care of 55 years ago. Yes, and, and you guys didn't even realize, 55 years ago, I made sure that somebody was born, somebody whose heart was after God and said, that guy there, even though nobody's aware, and he's not even aware, will come back all these years later. And he, God will use him to bring revival in the place. Amen. 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 Now you might think, oh, you're I'm not having it, guys. I'm not at all. But you've got to be honest as, as, as for what God has said. No longer will the mission be seen as dying. The mission is alive. God speaks over this place and says, you are my delight. You are favoured. Guys, you're favoured. Be a bit more happy than that. Because you know, when you get favour, you get something that you don't deserve and something that you weren't looking for. That's favour. Give me favour when I go shopping. Yeah. That means they'll give me things dirt cheap that I didn't realise I was going to get. <coughs> or even, you know, I buy one so we could have another one of them for free. That's favour. Yeah. Yeah? When you go and buy a car and it's, it's marked at 10 grand and the guy says, no, you can have it for three. What's wrong with it? Nothing. I'll just let you out for cheap. Yeah. That's favour. Yeah. Yeah. And God says, you're favoured. Yes. You're favoured. So the anointed on this place is favour. And when we tap into the anointed on this place as favour, that means we experience favour. Yes. Yes. That word Beulah, what did I say? The word Beulah means uh, the bride of God. It means you, uh, your land shall be married. Right? Married in God's kingdom is something very important because when God says you will be married, it's a lifelong, unbreakable commitment in God's eyes. A lifelong, unbreakable commitment. And God says you'll be called Hefzibar and you'll be called Beulah. Why? Because he says you married to me and that marriage to me will never be broken. Now that is important because when your husband 
because we would be classed as female in, 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 in this thing. Yeah. When your husband says, I will never leave you or forsake you and I'll take care of you and I'll look after you and I'll do everything you need and I'll give you favour and I'll make sure everything goes your way and I'm never going anywhere, I'm never going to walk off, I'm not going to change my mind after six months like the, uh, the pop stars do and the film stars. Or we fell out of love, bye bye, and off we go. He said, I'm with you forever. Yeah. Now what that means is, when God says, I'm with you forever, church, your pula, God says, I'm here forever. Yes. Ah, yeah. oh, but I'm, I'm here forever. You don't look very happy. <laughs> when God calls you pula, he says, that is my commitment to you. <coughs> I'm not going to turn up late, leave early, go out for 35 fag breaks. <laughs> like, sorry, but her name was Kath. <laughs> it's, not, it's true, it's true, it's true. <laughs> Kath, of all the names it could have been, but it is, it is it's true. See, we've got to get past the label that has been given to us, some of us. Because God said to for you as people, people, forget the church now, you as people, people have labelled you and said, oh, you'll never make yourself anything. You'll never be popular. Nobody will like you. You'll never get married. You'll, you'll always be a loser. You'll always be fat. You'll always be ugly. Or whatever it may be. Because people like to label things, don't they? If anyone ever says, you know, about being overweight, I'll just say, well, at least I can lose weight. If you're ugly, mate, you've stuck with that forever. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Oh. I'll edit that out. I'll leave it. But God says, I'm married to you forever. Yes. Now, verse 6 is important. I have set watchmen over your walls, O Jerusalem. They shall never hold their peace day and night. Watchmen are intercessors. So he said, I've put intercessors in place on your walls, day and night praying. Why the praying? New Living Translation again says, they pray, they are reminding God that God will give no peace until he does what he says he will do. So the intercessors, the watchmen are saying, God, you said this place would be full. You said there would be people born again. Yeah. You said there would be people being restored and healed in this place. You said, and I'm going to keep reminding you until you said, until you do what you said you would do. Yes. That's what it's saying there. Yeah. I've set watchmen on your walls. That's why we have to be, we have to have intercessory prayer. Yeah. My mind and my heart is trying to work out how we can fit more prayer in because we are, we got a lot on at times. And you think, how are we going to get more prayer? That's why we didn't do the Digging Deeper Tuesday, we did prayer instead. Yeah. Fabulous evening again. Yeah. Isaiah 59, we've got to pray. Isaiah 59 verse 20. If Zion is a type of the church, what did he say in Isaiah 59 verse 20? The Redeemer will come to Zion. What does that mean? The Redeemer will come to Zion. The Redeemer will come to this house people will get saved. That's what it's saying. Pe people will get saved again in this place. I started by saying that we're in a new era, a new season. A season where God has changed the name over this place. And it's, names are important. In English culture, maybe not as much. But I know definitely in the Ugandan culture, a name is important. What you name your, your son or your daughter is important. Keith can mean two things. It can mean courageous, that's the one I go with, or it can mean wind. <laughs> Make your mind up. But for me, for me, it's the wind of the Holy Spirit. That's what I say. That's what I'm going to say. But it means two things. You see, but we're labelled. Labels are important. God has put a crown on us of authority and victory on this place. So, you know, when you're in difficulties personally, your family, you take the authority that God's given you to deal with that situation. Yeah. Yeah. We've talked about this on a Tuesday night. Yeah. Don't put up with rubbish coming into your house. Yeah. 
when God has said, I've given you the authority to deal with it. Yes, yes. And not only have I given you the authority to deal with it, I've given you the authority to, so that you can have the victory in your place. Yeah. That's what's important. Yeah. Don't settle for all the junk that gets dumped on your doorstep by things and by people. Yeah. We live in a world where people like, how many fly tippers do we see? Yeah. Tons of them, especially their one when tips closed. The fly tipping everywhere. People like to do that with their comments. The fly tip on your doorstep. Let me dump all these things at you. Let me call you names. Let me say things to you. Sometimes, a little secret, when my own daughter mouths off and says things to me, you have to put a guard up. And it looks like you're not bothered, but I didn't either say, God bless you. I, I, I have to walk away for several reasons. But one of them is I don't want to hear the label that you're trying to give me which is not correct anyway. So I'm not listening to you. Off a trot. He has placed us in the hand of God as a crown full of wealthy jewels. He says rest restoration is ours. He says salvation will come to this place. And I want to conclude by going to Joshua. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua. Joshua chapter 1. This also came to me on last Saturday, and I toyed with whether to say this, and I thought, you know what, it's in the Bible, and God's put it in my heart, so I'm going to say it. That's me. If I feel God wants me to say something, I'll say something. But Joshua 1. And if we if we read a bit of the book there, Joshua ushered in a new era for the Israelites. Because when they 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 left um, slavery and Egypt, and Joshua fought some battles to take the people into the promised land. But what came on the on the back of Joshua taking over was the death of Moses. Moses died. Joshua took over, and the Israelites were about to cross the Jordan into the promised land. They didn't know at that stage it was a promised land. They just knew that they were crossing a river. Okay, that's where faith comes in because we don't always know what's going to happen tomorrow. We started the, the Sunday school children's ministry not knowing. In verse 6, in verse 7 and in verse 9, God says three things to Joshua. All the same, in fact. He says, verse 6, be strong and of good courage. Good job, my name is... Now, Keith means courage, eh? Be strong and have good courage, for this people you will divide as an inheritance. In verse 7, only be strong and very courageous. And in verse 9, I like the way God words this, because he's like, are you stupid? Have I not told you? Have I not commanded you? How many more times do I have to tell you? Be strong and have good courage. Three times he says the same thing. Be strong and have good courage. Be strong and good courage. Only be strong yeah. and very courageous. Do not be afraid. Don't be dismayed. For God is with you wherever you go. That word afraid, where he says don't be afraid or dismayed, that means don't be concerned, don't be upset, don't be worried, don't be agitated. The word afraid, don't be afraid, means don't, if you're afraid, you're worried that something bad is going to happen. If you're afraid. And God says to Joshua three times, be strong, be courageous. Be strong, be of good courage. Be strong, of good courage. Yes. Understand my heart when I say this. I'm not saying this in any, in any funny way or anything like that. Brian, yeah, Brian passed away last week. And Brian has been the, the kingpin, if I could use that, the staunch, the leader, the... The guy who's held this place together for many, 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 many years. Mm -hmm. So I say this, don't be afraid. No. Don't be courageous. Sorry, don't be agitated or fearful, but be strong and courageous. Brian has passed on to glory. Brian is in a better place. Brian is, what he says in Hebrew, is part of the cloud of witnesses who are looking down upon us and cheering us on. Yeah. Yeah. The last time I went to see Brian, he was in a lot of pain and he was holding his side. And we were talking about the church. 
as he was. And he suddenly jumped forward, startled me. And this is what he did. These were his last words, apart from goodbye. Okay? Let me turn it off because I'm going to shout. This was Brian, who could not talk very much. He was in a lot of pain. Keep going, Keith! Keep going! That's what he did to me. I need to jump down my seat. He shouted at me. Arms going. Keep going. Keep going. And I thought, he handed the baton last year. That was his words. His encouragement was to keep going. Was to keep going. He was closer to glory at that point than he was to human life. And I wonder, I don't know, but I wonder whether we could see something that we can't see now. Do you understand me? Because he's, he's get closer to being in heaven than we are. And I wonder whether he'd seen, gone and, you know, is in that, you know, preparing to go. And he looks and he can see what's going, I can see what's coming. I can see, Keith, Keith, you've got to keep going. You've got to keep going. And I tell you, he was incredibly animated. And when he finished, he just went back crying again. I thought, where did that come from? The guy's got no energy. God says, I am with you. Do not be worried that something bad will happen because it won't. Your favourite. The pages turn to this place. You are my delight. Salvation is coming to this house. Restoration is coming to this house. The page has turned, have you got them all up there? The page has turned. We're in a new chapter of the book, we're in a new season. We're in a season of growth and opportunity. We're in a season of expansion and the name of this place is no longer, you're empty, you're desolate. But it is, you're my delight. Yes. Salvation and restoration all over this church. Our future is greater than our past. Yes. The past may have been wonderful, but the future is better. Yes. Yeah? Yes. And you can only say you can only catch this because I can explain and talk about this till the cows come home. But you can only catch it. And what I mean by catch it is I've never said to Andy, I've never said to John about this place being full. But they have both come to me separately and said, Keith, Keith. I remember John when he came, he was like a dog on it. He's like, can, can I say that phrase? He was, like, he was so excited, he was so excited. I love my phrases, I've got loads of them. He says, he says, Keith, Keith, I see this place full. I see this place full. I spoke to Andy on the phone and said, Keith, Keith. He said, I don't know about having one service on a Sunday, mate. We'll be having two or three because the place will be full. No, I've never gone to them and says, tell me something. But they've caught something. Yeah. And they've, they've seen it. And they're telling me. Now that shows me that God is on the move. Yeah? Yes. We are no longer empty. We are no longer going to close. We are no longer a dying church. But we're very much alive. The presence of God is very much here. And we're in a new season, a new growth, a season of growth, a season of expansion. Salvation will come to this house. Healing will come to this house. Amen. Amen. You know, no one, even though people have tried over the years, people try and stop what God wants to do. Humans, we never learn. You can't stop what God wants to do. You know, and the best thing is, you don't complain about it, just get on board with it. That's the best thing. That's the best thing to happen. Just get on board. Get in there, throw your, your heart and soul into it, and let's see this thing grow and develop. You know, we're grateful, I'm grateful for Sharon. Found her up, she, she did a, a load of leaflets out. I gave her a load, thinking she ain't gonna do all these. Then she's, I've done them all. I'm thinking, in the heat of the day. And I think, when people, people do things like this, I said, Sharon, we pray that God will, God, people will see these invites and they'll wanna come. Because, you know, we can't get to talk to every single person, but we can. Believe God that as we invite people in this manner, 
some, some will see and some will come. And then we talk to our family and friends, like I said last week, and we believe that some will see and some will come. Then we talk to our family and we believe that some will see and some will come. And so on and so on. Then eventually, eventually the word gets out that God is doing something and then people will come because there ain't, you'll never find a nosier person than a Christian. <laughs> yeah? They want to come. It's not they'll turn up because they want to see what's happening. That's what, that's what they do. That's what people will do. We know the page has turned in the book. This, on that Saturday, it's never, like I said, it's never happened, that popping inside of me. Keith, the page has turned. It's a new day. It's a new day. And I want to thank God that we are growing. I want to, more than anything else, I want to thank God that the presence of God is here. For me, that's more important than anything else. Okay? That the presence of God is here. It's not a social club. I want the presence of God, I want the word of God taught correctly, and I want to see people's lives changed. Yeah. After that, yeah. everything is a bonus. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, everything's a bonus after that. Can we stand? And I just want to pray over us as people, over the church again. And you know, like I said, God's plan is bigger than our human brains can can comprehend at times mm -hmm. and we are like I said we're very sh short-sighted or near-sighted that we don't always see what's coming and we don't always realize that things that we need to do to enable it to happen because there's a part and a place for everyone to play in this place there's a lot of people